this is Mr. Anger, and uh, we're doing a video today from the Geometry Pace 1110, the second one. Hopefully you did well on your first pace. And uh, the second one goes a lot more into depth in doing proofs, where we have to write down, first of all, what's given, and that's the first line. They always give you something that you're trying to prove, and that is the last line. And then the trick is to figure out what goes on all the lines in between. And I will give you a clue that uh, whatever postulate they just presented, they do want you probably to use that in some way. And remember, the other very important truth is that you cannot assume that something is true just by looking at the diagram. Um, the, only, the only thing you can assume is like if there are two lines intersecting and you have vertical angles, you can always assume vertical angles are congruent. Or if, uh, like in a case like this, uh, this line is shared between these two triangles and so that line will be congruent to itself. And of course that's the reflexive property. But uh, hopefully you remember that and that's not too hard at this point. I do want to uh, talk about some of the ways that we can prove that triangles are congruent. Just a quick review, and then uh, let's talk about this AAS. So you remember that side, SSS means all three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another. Side angle side means one side, actually two sides are congruent, and this, the A here means that the angle between those two sides is congruent. So <clears throat> let me uh, mark on here. If I knew that this side was congruent to this side and this side was congruent to this side, then the side angle side postulate tells me that this, I have to prove that this angle here is congruent to this one. It can't be one of these other angles, okay? It has to be this angle that's between these two sides congruent to this angle and these two sides. That would be this side angle side, all right? Let me uh, erase these markings here. Let's pretend, let's talk about the angle side angle. Um, I can use that postulate to prove the two triangles are congruent if I know that this angle is congruent to this angle this angle is congruent to this angle, and the side that's between these two are congruent. So angle, two angles, and the side that's included. Included means between those two, okay? So that's where this gets um, a little trickier. Angle, angle, side. All right, and let's see, that was on page, um, 11 here at the bottom postulate 17 of two angles and a side not included of one triangle are congruent to two angles and a side not included all right so that's wording it a little differently than what we've had let's look at this example um, right here so this given part is telling me that angle L is congruent to angle N. So I'm going to mark L and N as being congruent. It also tells me that angle LPM, so LPM, so remember this is telling me that this has to be in the middle. LPM has to be congruent to NMP, NMP. It helps to draw the diagram or at least mark it in your pace and mark the sides that are congruent. Don't just look at it and try to guess, okay? Mark the congruent parts. So I have an angle congruent to an angle, this angle congruent to this angle, and that's all they tell me. And I'm trying to prove that they're congruent. Now I can't use um, angle side angle because I don't know that this side right here, which is between the two angles, is congruent to this side, which is between the two angles. So I can't use this diagram right here. But I can use this diagram, I can use this one, AAS, and <clears throat> as students trying to come into the classroom while we're recording a video here, uh, so the AAS says two angles and a side not included. Now I wonder which side that would be. Oh, that's this side right here. 
the, and how do I know that this side is congruent? Reflex it, right? That's pretty obvious. So angle, angle, and side not included between those angles is congruent to angle, angle, and this side not included. So um, we have now four possible ways to prove that triangles are congruent. So hopefully just that little clarification might help you before you get to the first, is that the first checkup on page um, 14, 15, page 15 coming up, and hopefully you do well on that.